In this video, we're going to talk about Vieta's formula, which is a really interesting formula for being able to predict the coefficients of a polynomial from its roots. So we'll start by looking at a quadratic polynomial like the one we have here. And suppose that a and b are the roots. And so we can write the polynomial in this form. And we'll assume the polynomial has 1 as its highest degree coefficient. So if we expand this, we'll get an x squared. And then we'll get a minus a and a minus b for the x coefficient. And then an a, b for the constant coefficient. And we see we have negative of the sum of the roots here and the product of the roots over here. So this phenomenon is going to play out in general. And let's take a look at the cubic case to get a sense of where it goes. So here we have a cubic polynomial with roots a, b, and c. Let's expand and see what happens. Now one way we could expand is term by term, but instead we're going to look at this collectively. So we see that the x cubed term is obtained by selecting the x in every single one of these binomials, and so we get x cubed. Now we wonder, what is the x squared term? Now a contribution of x squared comes up when we select exactly two of these x's from two of the binomials, and then a not x term from the other. So for example, negative c will appear with a coefficient of x squared. And so will negative a, because we can select this x and this x. And then so will negative b, by selecting this x and this x. So all together, we'll get a minus a and a minus b and a minus c. OK, what about the x coefficient? Well, doing the same sort of thing, we see that the x coefficient comes up when we select one x from one of the binomials and then non-x terms from the other two in the expansion. So for example, x will have a negative b and a negative c, which together combine to make bc. So we'll have a positive bc here. And by the symmetry, we'll also get a positive ab and then a positive ac. And finally, our last term, the constant coefficient, is a negative abc. So we're seeing what comes to light here. The terms involve products of the roots, where we start out with individual roots being added and then negated. Then we have sums of pairs, and then we have the triple. And we have a negative contribution here, a positive, and a negative here. And this is what happens in the most general case. If we had n roots in total, say r1 through rn, the coefficient of x to the n is going to be a 1. And the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 is going to be minus the sum of all of the roots. The coefficient of x to the n minus 2 is going to be plus the sum of pairs of roots from r1 up to r2 all the way to rn minus 1 rn, etc., until we get to the coefficient of x to the 0, which is the product of the roots multiplied by negative 1 to the n. Okay, so this interesting phenomenon will allow us to address a lot of different problems. So let's take a look at examples now. So for the first example, we're going to look at this question that says if a, b, and c are the roots of this polynomial right over here, a degree 3 polynomial in x, determine the sum of the squares of the roots. Now one way to go about this is actually figure out what the roots of this are and then compute individually the squares of them and add them up. However, we actually don't know what the roots of this might be. They might be very complicated complex numbers that are not easily tractable to figure out. And so we'll need to do something else. And Vieta's formula is going to help us to do this. So the roots are the solutions to the equation that's obtained by setting this equal to 0. Now in Vieta's formula, we typically don't have this constant term here. So let's divide throughout and rewrite the polynomial equation as x cubed minus 11 fifths x squared plus 7 fifths x plus 3 fifths equals 0. And now, because of Vieta, we have access to some information. Here, 
This number with the negative sign is the negative of the sum of the roots. So 11 fifths is going to itself equal the sum of the roots, which is a plus b plus c. Furthermore, 7 fifths is the sum of the pairwise products. So 7 fifths equals ab plus ac plus bc. So right now, it seems like we don't have access to the quantity a squared plus b squared plus c squared. But we can come kind of close. We can square a plus b plus c and have some information there. So in particular, 11 fifths squared is equal to the quantity a plus b plus c squared. Now we can expand this product by thinking about it as two copies of the trinomial a plus b plus c. Now when we expand this, we pick a term from here and a term from here and add all possibilities of doing so up. First, we notice we have terms like this when we pair a and a and b and b and c and c. And that gives us a squared plus b squared plus c squared, which I'll underline because it's actually exactly the thing that we're interested in computing. So it kind of makes sense off the bat actually to compute a plus b plus c all squared because we know this will appear as terms in this expansion. But then we have all of the residual stuff that we need to take into consideration. We get those from the cross terms, things like ac and bc, etc. Now let's look at ac. We have a contribution of ac by picking a in the first trinomial and c in the second. Then we can also pick C in the first and A in the second. So we get two copies of AC. And the same thing happens with AB. We'll have two copies of AB. Here's one and here's another. And two copies of BC. We'll have this one and then this one. So we get twice AB plus AC plus BC. But luckily for us, we actually have access to this by Vieta's formula. It's 7 fifths. So, all together, we can rearrange and figure out that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to 11 fifths all squared minus twice 7 fifths. Great, and we can compute this exact value to figure out what a squared plus b squared plus c squared is. So two things to say here. One is that Vieta's formula is very useful for doing computations involving symmetric sums of your roots. Here we have the sum of all the squares of our roots. By using information about symmetric sums that we get by looking at the formulas themselves. This kind of phenomenon actually can be generalized. If you want to know information about the nth power, you can retrieve it from symmetric sums of the roots. Okay, let's look at a different type of example of the use of Vieta's formula. So in this problem, we're going to have a backward situation, where here we're given information about a system of polynomial equations that a bunch of variables satisfy, and we'll be interested in figuring out what the variables are. So the problem asks to find all complex numbers a and b and c, for which a plus b plus c is 0, ab plus ac plus bc is 0, and abc is 0. So we see that these terms on the left look like things involving Vieta's formula. So let's actually create a polynomial, we'll call it p of x, that takes into consideration all of these values a, b, and c. So it has a, b, and c as roots. Now if we knew what the actual polynomial p of x was, and we're able to find out the roots of that polynomial in a different way, we'd have access to all of the possibilities of a, b, and c. Okay, so let's expand this polynomial. So the first term is x cubed. Now the next term is x squared times the negative of the sum of the roots. The sum of the roots is zero, so this is negative zero, so this is zero. Now, the x term of the expansion is going to be the sum of the pairwise products. And that is 0 as well, so we have a 0 here. And finally, we'll have the negative of the product of the roots 
as our constant coefficient, and that's zero. And so this polynomial actually is x cubed. So let's think about what we did here. We have these three complex numbers, a, b, c, satisfying these equations. And we've said that if they are roots of a polynomial, that polynomial has to be the polynomial x cubed. But the polynomial x cubed only has one root. It's the root 0. And so all of these values, a and b and c, are forced to be 0. They're roots of this particular polynomial here. And this polynomial only has 0 as a root. So this is a very interesting way of finding out solutions to equations when you have symmetric sums involving your variables. You can use a polynomial like this to get information about what the values are forced to be. So an interesting formula, Vieta's formula, that lets us find out information about polynomials and then also figure out information about polynomials if we know symmetric sums involving the roots.